What's up YouTube? How goes it? So you may remember several weeks ago, I actually did a review on HP's mid-range HP Laptop 15. And that review kind of left a bitter taste in my mouth when it comes to HP products. That laptop was not good at all for various reasons. If you are interested in checking that review out, I'll leave a link in the description below for your own reference. However, with that being said, I figured I'd give HP another chance, but this time in their higher end premium market. So for today, we're actually reviewing the HP Envy X360 2-in-1 15 inch laptop Top. This bad boy has been refreshed with the latest Tiger Lake processor. It's got a lot to offer and we're going to see in this review if it lives up to its hype and expectations or if it's going to be another disappointment by HP. Whatever the case, we're definitely going to try to answer the question if it's worth it for you guys. So as always guys, if you enjoy the content, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. We got all kinds of awesome quality content here. Thank you so much for watching. Without further ado, let's get started. Starting off with a super quick unboxing. So the very first thing you're going to notice, of course, is that there's a very nice, sleek, modern black cardboard box here with the HP Envy graphics. I'm glad to see HP put priority around premium packaging. Once you remove the content seal itself and proceed to actually open the box, you're going to find a number of items. First and foremost, of course, our laptop tightly wrapped in plastic wrapping. Once you remove the wrapping itself, inside here it is in a nice metallic silver color. Looks pretty sleek to be honest, but we'll come back to the laptop in just a second. Beyond that, you're going to find you have another white box. Inside this white box, the first thing you have is a 65 watt charging adapter. Unfortunately, it's proprietary. Honestly, it's becoming shameful how a high-end laptop is using a cheap proprietary charging adapter as opposed to a USB-C adapter. They could really learn a thing or two from the Dell XPS 13 or the new MacBooks. Of course, with that being said, you do also get a wall outlet cable for the adapter. And inside you have a smaller black box. Inside this stylish black box, you have the HP stylus. I can't remember the exact name for it. I'll put it in the description, however. And it looks pretty nice. It's also matching with the color. It's made of hard TPU. We'll come back to this in a second as well. And that's pretty much all the important things inside the box. Next, let's talk about the design of this laptop. So this is a pretty heavy laptop weighing just over 4.2 pounds. Keep in mind, of course, firstly, this is a 15 inch laptop. And secondly, this is technically a two in one and not a ultra book. Of course, with that being said, HP has used a nice mix of standard and premium materials. And this laptop definitely looks premium and it feels premium as well for the most part. Starting off at the top side of the laptop, you have this nice smooth metallic finish. There's no particular texture, which I kind of like. It seems to be a growing trend with premium laptops. And in the dead center, you have this super stylish HP logo. It looks more modern, more sleek. I'm digging it. And that's pretty much it for the top side. On the rear side of the laptop, you can tell this is a pretty thick laptop from a height perspective. You also notice you have the HP Envy branding on one of the hinges. And in the center area is where you have your outtake vents. This is where all the hot air basically comes out of from the laptop. As you make your way to the side of the laptop, IO port diversity is definitely less than ideal. So on one side, you have a headphone jack a USB-A port, you also have a HDMI port, and yes, you do have a USB-C port with power transmission capabilities. On the other side, you have that hideous proprietary charging jack, and of course, you also have a, another USB 3.0 port, and lastly, you do have a full-sized SD card reader, which is a nice touch. Finally, as we get to the bottom of the laptop, I again have to appreciate HP's consistency in terms of quality here. The bottom of the laptop actually also has a metallic finish, you have this nice large vent. This is of course for air intake. And if you look carefully, you'll notice on either side of the laptop, you have a speaker grill. This of course is for the Bang & Olufsen stereo speaker setup. We will by the way do a sound test later on in the video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. As you unfold the laptop, you'll notice a few things. First and foremost, you have this nice metallic finish here as well, which is the same color as the rest of the body. Also, you'll notice that you have a reasonable amount of palm rest space. While this is not the most I've seen on a 15 inch laptop, it is well within the acceptability threshold. 
Also, you'll notice you have a pretty large trackpad that actually looks really sleek and modern with a glass surface. Unfortunately, the minute you actually start clicking on this trackpad, it's less than ideal quality. The clicks are flimsy. The trackpad tends to off balance a little bit if you click on one corner or the other. So I wouldn't say it's terrible. It doesn't meet the looks it portrays. So, you know, there's a little quality gap here. Next up, we make our way to the keyboard. And I have to be honest, the keyboard here is pretty decent in quality. So it's not flimsy or loose in the slightest. The keys look like they're well made and definitely match with the rest of the laptop. Unfortunately, I find there's a less than ideal key travel. I would appreciate a little bit more key travel, which would in result give me a more tactile feel. But some people might actually appreciate the more soft touch nature of this keyboard. It's gonna come down to preference. You also have the inclusion of a full size 10 key number pad. And yes, the keyboard is fully backlit. And the backlighting is pretty strong. Also, you do not have any dedicated media keys. They are all integrated into the traditional function key set. So there's that. You also have the power button, which is kind of meshed in with the rest of the keyboard. I personally like having dedicated power buttons, but again, that's more of an aesthetics preference. Also, near the arrow case at the bottom of the keyboard, you'll notice you have a dedicated fingerprint sensor. It's a little awkwardly placed, However, it looks pretty sleek. Past the keyboard itself, you'll notice you have this nice large mesh grill. This is not a speaker grill. Those are located on either corner of the laptop towards the bottom side. This is actually a passive cooling vent and more of a design choice. Also directly above that, you'll notice you have a two tier hinge system. So you have one hinge on either side. And this is a really well built hinge I found for the most part. It's super sturdy. It doesn't wobble too much. And it has to be sturdy because this laptop can technically rotate 300 160 degrees and turn into a hybrid tablet. So of course that quality is expected. As you make your way to the actual display fitting, you'll notice you have super thin bezels that are more or less in line with 2021 standards, a relatively thin chin. On the top side, you have another laptop with another mediocre 720p webcam. Thankfully, it's not any worse in the competition, but unfortunately, it's not any better either. If you're using it in low light condition, Lord have mercy on you. Let's talk about the display quality. I don't know what it is with a lot of these premium laptop makers, but when it comes to making laptops for creative users, it's like they don't know who their target audience even is. So the display quality here isn't inherently bad. It's just not good considering this is a premium laptop. So you have a full HD 1080p screen, which in itself is not bad. The resolution is clear and sharp enough. Where things start getting very depressing very quickly is when you come to the color accuracy. So you only have a 45% NTSC screen. In other words, you only have a 67% sRGB rating. So colors don't look washed out, but they don't look vivid either. And if you are are a power creative user doing a lot of photo editing, color grading, or video editing, you're definitely gonna notice those lackluster colors. Also, you only have a peak brightness of 250 nits. This is a hybrid laptop, versatile laptop, whatever you wanna call it. The fact is that 250 nits is not even closely sufficient for an outdoor setting where the sun is at your screen. It's gonna feel washed out. This is only sufficient for indoor settings. I don't know what they were thinking when they made this display in terms of brightness and color accuracy, but this is definitely one of the most disappointing elements of this laptop. Next up, let's talk about performance. So from a specifications perspective, this particular configuration is rocking Intel's latest 11th generation Core i5 1135G7 processor. We've also got eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz. Of course, we also have a one terabyte Salsa drive. And lastly, yes, we do have Intel's Iris XE graphics with a total of four GB shared memory. It's also worth noting you do have the latest Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth standard on board. So day-to-day -day performance is gonna feel as snappy as it should with any modern day laptop. Documents open up super fast, web browsers are responsive, and of course you can watch any of your favorite Netflix or YouTube videos without any sort of lag, in short of you having a crappy internet connection. So that's gonna feel pretty normal. Where things of course get interesting is when you start doing more resource intensive tasks, like let's say video editing for example. So I was pretty impressed with this laptop. It keeps its cool when you're doing 1080p video editing on Adobe Rush, there's no frame drop whatsoever. It's a very smooth experience. Even when you start doing more intensive 4K video editing, you'll still find relatively for the most part, there's little to no frame drop. It's only when you're doing it for prolonged periods of time that you start noticing the occasional performance drop. But beyond that, it's pretty well done. 
From a gaming perspective, this laptop is about what you'd expect. So the Intel Iris Xe chip can only produce so much power because it's a integrated GPU, not a dedicated one, which basically means you can run most AAA titles, but don't expect them to run beyond 30 FPS at low settings if you're gonna use the native resolution. Also, some games may actually go beyond that, but again, it will depend on the game you're playing and how well it's optimized. And I know there's a subset of you who want to know the temperatures on this thing. So if you're gonna use this thing like a wild horse, under peak stress, you can expect a maximum surface temperature of 47 degrees Celsius. However, under more realistic and moderate usage conditions, the surface temperature hovers around 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. And if you are using a low workload or if you're keeping it in idle conditions, then the temperature actually stays below 23 degrees Celsius, which is pretty comfortable. So while the temperatures aren't absurd, yes, this laptop can get pretty hot pretty quickly if you start doing exotic things for prolonged periods. From a battery life perspective, this laptop isn't that impressive. So basically, if you are doing day-to-day -day tasks with a moderate workload at 50% brightness, you can get up to 8.5 hours of battery life. However, we found that if you increase the brightness to 100% with a moderate workload, that quickly drops to around 5.5 hours. And if you start doing more CPU intensive stuff and you have a heavy workload nonstop, the battery life can drop to as little as 1.5 hours. So it's a pretty dramatic drop. So keep in mind, if you're buying this laptop for all day usage, this might not be the best option in that regard. From a sound perspective, this laptop sounds pretty good to be honest. The Bang & Olufsen stereo setup is actually better than I thought it would be, but have a quick listen for yourself. You be the judge. The final element I want to talk about is the touchscreen and the HP stylus. Given the fact this is a convertible two-in-one laptop, we have to keep in mind that it is also intended to be used as a tablet. With that being said, the stylus the HP provides is pretty high in quality. It's actually charged through a USB-C port, which is ironic because HP uses a proprietary charging port for their laptop. Take notes from your own products, HP, seriously. Of course, with that being said, I have to say that it's super responsive. There's practically no lag or latency between what you're writing and what's appearing on the screen itself. And yes, you can use the touchscreen with your fingers as well. Generally speaking, I think this is a great hybrid tablet. Even though the display quality is not that good, the responsiveness of the touchscreen is, on the contrary, quite amazing. So what's my final take on this laptop? Well, priced at 1050 USD, this is a two-in-one laptop that's competing in the premium market. And in terms of the feel and design of this laptop, it's top-notch. The build quality is definitely there. And I really like how HP is trying their best to make a premium experience over here. Also, the fantastic keyboard is a welcome addition. I also appreciate the high quality sound system from Bang & Olufsen here. It definitely sounds a notch above your average laptop. Unfortunately, the less than ideal borderline disappointing display is not good for many people. If you are a creative user, you may be entirely driven away from that less than ideal color accuracy again. Also, the battery life is not that good in itself. Eight hours of average usage time at 50% brightness is nothing to write home about. So if you are looking for all day usage here, this laptop is not the ideal choice. Also, it's worth noting, it would have been nice if HP included more IO port diversity. While it's not the worst I've seen on laptops in this class, this is a 15 inch laptop. There was definitely space to add a additional port or two. Overall, this laptop isn't a bad value. It's just that it's going to be very specific for the type of audience it's targeted at, which is ironic because a lot of creative users might eye it for its hybrid tablet capabilities, but that display quality may at the same time turn them away. So. Use it at your own discretion, try it out, see if it's the right one for you. But overall, my take is if you are someone who relies heavily on color accuracy, don't go for this laptop. But if you are someone looking for versatility and you want a nice hybrid tablet that's good in build quality and justifies the premium price, this is definitely the laptop for you. As always guys, if you enjoyed this review, consider subscribing to my channel. I got all sorts of awesome tech content. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Soul Tech, logging out.